Hello and welcome to our first uh, video podcast or vlogcast with SIA Austria Ski Instructor Academy. I'm here with my boss, colleague, friend, Paul. Um, my name's Jamie. I'm one of the coaches with SIA. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking through a lot of different things. Paul, maybe you could tell us a little bit, bit about what we're going to be going over in the next few weeks. Yeah, I mean, in these difficult times, we, we thought it might be beneficial for people to hear a little bit about what goes on in the background of one of the world's largest ski and snowboard training companies. To give you an idea how our team of over 30 high-end coaches deal with over four to 500 students in a year, coming through doing level one, level two and level three ski and snowboard courses. So it's a bit of a behind the scenes and you get a bit of an idea of how we build a recreational skier to a ski instructor. Yeah. On top of that, um, we want to tackle everything that is in the peripheral as well. So that might be anything from sleeping, nutrition, um, injury. Just, just when, you, when you're saying injury, they obviously, I hopefully in the next few <laughs> episodes won't be looking like this. I've actually broke my neck on the final day of the season. Um, I'm about to start my hopefully rehabilitation side of it um, in the next week, so hopefully yeah, I'll, so Jamie I'll be able to learn a, a bit from it. A fractured uh, C6, C7, um, which is quite serious. You know, when anybody knows that's had any type of injury to the spine, any tweaking of that area, that's it, you're out. I mean, if you've got a bad knee or a bad elbow, you've hurt your ankle, you sort of can limp about and get about, but when you've done some damage to the, the neck or the back, then yeah, it's pretty much game over at the minute, isn't it? It, it makes it difficult. Yeah, there's a lot of sitting around. Yeah. So we look at that side as well, because I was born in the 60s, and I know that as I get older, even from my background in sport, you're slowing down, you know, things get a little bit more difficult. It takes that little bit more time to tune in in the mornings before skiing. And yeah, things get a bit creaky and um, the abuse that I've put my body through over the years, certainly we'll talk about that. And I'll talk about saying, you know, you are not your MRI scan. So when we deal with doctors and things, you know, I often hear doctors will say things like, you know, yeah, you shouldn't squat or you shouldn't deadlift. Um, normally I would say probably go and find yourself a new doctor because you might want to understand if I can't squat, how do I get off the toilet in the morning? If I can't deadlift, how do I pick something off the floor? So we'll t turn around and maybe change that to let's make these movement patterns accurately and correctly. And within skiing, you'd agree as well, it's important that we have accuracy on the ski and we have discipline of the body not to end up injured. Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah, so obviously, like we say, we'll be addressing all these different issues um, throughout the next few weeks. Um, but what, what are we going to talk about specifically today? Please? Today we thought we'd open out with something, um, just looking at some of our skiers from last year in Argentina, because we're looking forward to getting to Argentina this year. Yeah. Fingers crossed with the uh, coronavirus. We're up and running and we have everything booked and going ahead with that at the minute. But let's have a look at how you, because primarily, I mean, I don't get involved in teaching as much nowadays, but uh, you do. You, you teach probably nine months of the year. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of experience built up over your career. Yeah. Um, one thing that we don't want to do within Ski Instructor Academy's team of over 30 qualified and um, high qualified snowboarders and skiers is we don't want to blunt their thought process by telling them there's one way to do something. And you would agree with that anyway. In any sport, there's not one way to actually tackle something. Yeah, like like I said in our previous um, uh, podcast. podcast, if you guys tuned in, I don't know if you did. Um, like the, the thing that created sport to evolve, I come from a boxing background, is, is people kind of stepping outside the box and, and that's what changed it. Originally in, in martial arts, before Bruce Lee came in, everything was fixed form, cat and all this kind of stuff, and then it became freestyle martial arts and the sport evolved. And it's the same with boxing, with your Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Robinsons, all these kind of Prince Nazims. Um, they go away from the rules of the sport to a certain degree and that creates the sport to develop. And um, I think, yeah, it's just, it's, being more playful with the sport. There's always kind of rules that you have to stick by. We're always obviously searching for balance, but let's 
play about with balance as much as we can to see how far we can actually push it like an athlete would like a skier if your hair shares or your ligaties or something like that would go out and go out and yeah play. i think i think the the issue is is that coming more let's say from gymnastics background we, we do have specific positions that we want people to get into for the safety of global flexion global extension in the spine um, etc but in in skiing um, sometimes positions can be very blocking and we talked about this on our last podcast when we spoke about alpine basic position and how it can be beneficial but equally how it can completely destroy somebody's ability to go from a level two to a level three to a level four ski instructor yeah yeah 100 percent. that that the word position for me like i said on the on the on the podcast was it it's a fixed form or people see it as a fixed form so they hold movement they stop moving on the platform and for me we're never ever sitting still on that platform yeah so let's move on to where we are going to look at a skier so um this skier i'm not going to go back completely to the first day but this is sort of in the the second day so we've allowed him to get his feet a bit and he is about to um to ski down he looks like this so as anybody looking at a skier it's very easy to pick up all the things that are wrong <laughs> and that's the problem with many instructors they they don't um look at the positives they don't always see you know what the guy's doing fairly well and that's something which we try to to look at as well we want to have a bit of an idea as to um what's good but at the same time yes we want to see what's negatively affecting his performance so how does ski instructor academy take somebody like this and then progress them well surprisingly there isn't actually just one fixed way is there jamie i mean you could take him and do something completely different to what i might do or what christian might do or gunther or Walter or yeah like it's the same one we spoke about you know different associations about christian with the with the podcast last time christian who's done the canadian who's done um who's full certain canadian and in, in the austrian who's talking about the difference between those associations but he also said ultimately we're all trying to paint the same picture and um, it's just we all go maybe it's a slightly different way to get there so yeah i'm um, would probably do something so, yeah, different to yourself but one uh, thing that, that that we're interested in in ski instructor academy is if we have up to 500 um students going through in a season doing level one two and three we have the abil ability over the last decade plus to collect a lot of information now that's very important to somebody like me who looks at it from a more scientific approach where i want something that i can use that is observable repeatable data or i can also look at that data and say well actually this didn't work very well let's do this but i think there's a danger sometimes within the ski industry that um especially people who've been in the industry for a long time they may have a way that they find very good teaching guests and then think oh it's, it's successful it does work and within a certain time frame i generally get 99 percent of people up to the level so i'll just stick with that and never change that system Whereas even if I have something from my say that I think that worked so well that season, that was such a good method, there's nothing stopping me from creating a new box. Not thinking outside of the box, but just going, throw that all to one side and let's just try something completely different this year. And I think that's important. Yeah, that it's, again, it's, it's that word of just playing about with, with different things. I think that's the beauty for myself. Of, I am on the hill for about nine months of the year. Um, I get to play about with my clients as they come in because we generally each week with our group the guys might be on a, a six week level two course i'll i'll ski with them for five days and then it'll rotate around i'll get a new group for the next week so i can you know i have a lot of people to play around with um on the platform so it's yeah it's an experimentation that you the guests are paying you money for you to practice <laughs> that's how it is it's like you're practicing your coaching skill we're just trying to fast track everybody or get everybody as good as they can as quick as they can yeah. and with hopefully an understanding of where they're at what they're doing and where they should be going um i got that when i came into the industry um a long time ago now and um, from my coaches that i understood where i was and what i should be doing 
in the future to improve and because you've got an understanding of the foundation of the sport so um yeah hopefully we're delivering well, i'm always trying to deliver that same thing so my guests can go out and self-teach throughout this whole season and constantly progress yeah so what is the most important thing when we have this group in front of us well first of all surprisingly it's are they coachable so that word coachable is really important because in in sports we have these archetypes if you like of how a person learns and how they think and um, i mentioned this before on some of the podcasts where i said look i can be quite skeptical I, I don't necessarily look at something and believe it you know it's like people who take their science from netflix there's more to it than that. So I tend to look into the background of that. And I'll take my signs from that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and if, if, we are, if we have a group that's coachable, it makes a big difference. But rather than get into the, the, that side of things, and we'll come back to that maybe in one of our later episodes, let's just look at this particular skier and what we decided to do. Well, the first thing that was most important was that we wanted to consider the skier's ability to move, range of movement, agility, coordination. These are very important factors combined with power and strength. So he is a young lad in this case, and we, we look at different age ranges, but he's fairly young. Um, so we would generally expect, you know, that he has some of these functionalities. Yeah. 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 So after we considered a few things and played around with some ankle movement, which we'll get back to at a later stage, we decided in this case to tackle something, this is from a few years back, um, where we would go, right, we are just gonna play around with the inside ski. So obviously we hear a lot in ski instructor circles about coaching, you know, the outside ski balance, um, all to do with that side of things. but from just going in a different tangent because we wanted to experiment with something else. We say, look, we're going to play around with the principle of long leg, short leg. Yep. That's so you, by long leg, short leg, you mean being actively extending the outside leg or actively retracting the inside leg or both? Exactly. And that's the big question. So when we look at that side of things, one of the things that I want to do or did with this group was I didn't want to give them too much information. Okay, and that is a big problem in, in this day and age now with coaches. Um, myself, coming from a very technical background, I have to be very guarded that I don't start teaching as I like to learn, which Jamie knows. When I'm coordinating the staff, it can be a nightmare for them because, yeah, I, I can go off on this ridiculous tangent of talking about anatomy and physics and levers and things, and it's... And the vast 30 strong staff, 30 of them are... Uh fallen asleep <laughs> yeah, mentally left the building so um yeah so we'll try and keep it short and sweet as as we do on the hill as we do on the hill yeah so jamie's question's good but it's unlikely that any of these students had asked such an in-depth question so in my case i had just said to the group um you know what happens if we simply play around with this long leg short leg and i said what happens when I suddenly and abruptly retract and draw in the inside leg just after the apex of the turn? So basically, I was just saying to them, I want you to go around the turn and so abruptly and suddenly pull your inside ski up to your chest or under your armpit. Mm -hmm. That's it. And just to quickly jump in there, Paul. So these guys aren't high-end racers. This was something no. that we probably talk about with people who are going to a, an ISA level or level three when you come to how do we move our center of mass further inside the turn? How do we get that hip to ground kind of turn? This is your level ones, level eight twos. Eight to 15 weeks recreational skier. So Somebody eight weeks to 15 weeks. So skier. it's guys who are relatively, maybe passively carving the ski a little bit. So they've started mm, doing a bit of performance. Not this guy wasn't, but yes, so, yeah. somewhere about okay. there. You know, so they've got a little bit of sportiness. About They're on our Anvert course, which is a level one, level two combined course. So we say to him, and what's difficult here is almost to give them this idea and obviously then provide them a super clean demonstration as well. But at the same time, try and resist them thinking too much and questioning too much, but just get them going down here. So, you know, 
the questions that I might follow after they've done a run or two at this, would I could ask them, what happens with your speed? How do you feel this sudden shortening of your inside leg challenges body stability? What happens to the turn shape? Is there more or is there less edging of the ski? So these are questions I could ask on the, on the ski lift when I'm going up as they're playing around with this principle. So what I mean by this is all points of performance have been reached before I, I made this, by the way, this drill. We'll talk further about what points of performance they were. But now we see the lad, he's on to his about third run, playing with the idea of feeling his inside leg shortening. And his outside leg, maybe as Jamie says, remaining longer and actively braced. But I haven't necessarily pointed him to that at this stage. I haven't mentioned Alpine basic position at this stage. Okay. And previously to this um, build up or this progression, you said this was the second day on snow with, with, with yourself. Yeah. And um, you haven't spoke about Alpine basic position no. up to this point at all. Okay. No, I'm Alpine about basic Alpine. position being angulation of the upper body over the, the outside ski or that kind of thing. You yeah, I mean, the traditional way of people think of Alpine basic position within ski associations. So we didn't mention that. So we're now on to um, the sort of fifth, sixth run of going down. And this is a, a relatively actually quite, you know, steep videos never show how, how steep a run is. But he's playing around with this principle of it. And I can see, because I can see he's actually doing what I'm asking, I don't really need to add much to it. And this is the temptation, especially from my side, of going, oh, we're going to talk about the navicular, we're going to start talking about how he needs to use this and what. No, the mechanics of it are not important. When I mean mechanics, I'm talking about this angular velocity, origins and muscles, insertions. So before, before Paul goes off on it, I would just fist pump him, say good job and let's move on. So let's yeah. do that now. He's doing it well, yeah. let's move on. So I have not made at this time any mention or priority given to Alpine basic position. I'm wanting him to give me feedback and tell me you know, what happens to the speed? Can you edge more? Can you go quicker from turn to turn? Are you getting your hip closer to the ground? You know, which ski do you feel you're turning on? I can, I can cue him, what we call cueing and tactile cueing, to start to think about this exercise more and more. And that's what it is. It's, it's and, an exercise. And also, obviously, we're, we're videoing the client, so you can obviously allow him to see himself after he's done the run to see what he's feeling, the sensations that he's receiving from his own body is, is kind of coming back to him on that video. Absolutely, absolutely. So now we're on day four with the group and this is where we're at on day four. And if you're looking at what we're doing, you might be focusing on his outside ski balance. That's fine if that's how you're looking at it. But he's getting that position, that nat more natural, non-blocked alpine basic position, if you like, without me mentioning it at this stage. Remember, this was day one stroke two when we first had him. This is what he looked like. So on your day one, if this is your day two and you're starting to think about actively retracting the inside uh, knee from falling to then the arc apex there in the turn, on your day one, what you address and just more you know, becoming aware maybe for myself, I'm, you know, I talk a lot about the stability in the upper body, give them sensations of, you know, how to get that core active and what it feels like in the turn to keep that, uh, that upper body stable so I've got more access to my feet for steering. Would you be going down that same path in your first day with these guys of, you know, tuning into the feet, the steering and, and body activation? Um, yes and no, in the sense of with this lad, I did do something completely different and very, very... Uh, controversial and radical I would say because I <laughs> I actually worked on his range of movement in his ankle knee and hip and I abused the sort of golden rule because we tend to favor fore and aft a yes, lot of the time yeah, yeah. don't we we see the importance of skiing and the development of a skier is trying to challenge them fore and aft because that has a coupled effect on other movements, whether it be lateral, rotational, etc. Now, 
On our next subsequent video, I'll show you what I did on day one, two to get him um, more agile, mm -hmm. more aware, and to tune in to the stability, core stability, and the spinal mechanics. And I'll, I'll sort of discuss why I did it that way. And again, one of the reasons for doing it the way I did it was because I wanted to challenge myself not to take a group and just teach them a successful way that I know works. I wanted to break that, create a complete new box and say, let me try something different here in the Southern Hemisphere down there and just, and just detail this by videos, collect it with the rest of the data we have. Um, and we have probably about, you know, 4,000 videos of skiers, which gives us a great reference point to be able to improve our coaching staff and help them during coordination to see what, what, what didn't work, which is very important, you know, well, this was a disaster, and accepting it was a disaster, and, and of course, what did work. And I think, you know, generally, when we, sorry, we look at the screen here of this skier, you're looking at this skier and you would think, Jamie, that he's had some tuition with body balancing almost. I mean, I generally don't talk about body balance. No, but what I'm saying but, is from a traditional um, ski point of view. I build alpine, if you want to go to alpine position, I build it up from the ground up over. But like we spoke again on the podcast in the Austrian system, in a lot of systems, to get people through that level two exam, you know, there's, there's a lot of, they talk about the upper body but coming over the outside ski as opposed to just being a natural position of balance. Um, but you can see clearly see here in this video that he's starting to develop a natural position of balance on the outside ski. And interestingly is obviously my cue to him after we started to make this very radical first like abrupt movement of the inside leg. I wanted it to be really abrupt because that gets the brain to switch on. If I'd said slowly retract your inside leg as you go round the cup, oh, nothing would have happened with especially the group. Especially if you said it like that. Especially if I said it like that. Yeah. Instead, I created a very sudden, an abrupt complete, not a retraction, because I didn't want them to retract it from the snow, but I wanted them to have a feeling that they were sucking it under their armpit, if you like. Mm -hmm. And then as I detuned the speed of it and said, look, slow down the impulse, I then started to say, but do it sooner and do it even sooner. And when you think you should do it, do it even sooner than that, because now you see the natural tipping as he's able to start to topple into the new turn and he's getting some form of edge angle above the fall line. And as I said, this is a guy who's probably got, if I look back on his records, it'll be around 10 weeks of skiing. So, you know, he's, he's not too experienced and we don't want to overcomplicate things. But at this stage, I'm happy to now develop from there the next steps and start to add in more and more performance at this stage. Yeah, and I think from my own skiing is because we hit, you know, we keep on using this word alpine basic positions. I never think about this position in my own skiing. I simply just think about keeping my body still and strong and using my legs or using my feet and um, to work the platform, building everything up from the ground up over. And I get that natural position of balance. Yeah. Um, and that's what you're seeing there. You're seeing it coming from a natural form because we haven't spoken about it with him. So it's not forced from the upper body. He's not trying to search for a position. Yeah. He's just searching for fluidity of movement and that position's coming naturally. And it has to be observable, measurable, repeatable. And therefore, you know, again, another skier. Um, I, I believe he had a little bit more experience. He was more of a, you know, a, a two week a year skier, but still young, obviously. So maybe he's 20 weeks if he's lucky. Again, coming down on day two, you can see he's got a little bit of um, um, agility. He's, he's not so bad. Yeah, a little bit more of a sporty guy, maybe, yeah. than, the, than the former skier. But both, you know, young, athletic lads. And we can see on the video here that he starts to play with the inside leg again. We can actually actively see it on that knee. If you, if, you know, if you find it hard to focus on something, pick and zoom in on one point. And I think as well, obviously, like you said before about, it's don't pick faults. We can see the rotation of the body and everything like that, but it's let's let them play with it. These faults will naturally work themselves out if you just mass practice something a little bit. And I think that's for myself is what's missing a little bit from certain instructors is because I came from a sporting background myself, 
it's the grinding. It's just repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, and I think that's what we're trying to do here. It's just don't go, okay, look, come down here. Yeah, you're rotating, yeah. you're doing this wrong, your back and everything. It's like, just let him continue to play yeah. with it and we'll see it. But, you know, Absolutely. that's good. That's better than the last time. Let's go again. Try you and get see, it you see it here. Yeah, it's written on here. Is he rotating? Is he on the inside? Yeah. Yeah, look, you're all going to sit there and go, oh, he's rotating, he's doing this. But that's the haters in the world. What Jamie's pointing out is very important in our coaching staff is less is more. Yeah. Let's Stop stopping people after every run and trying to change the speed. I think as well, it's, it's, it's hard because a client's always like, was that better? <laughs> what am I doing wrong down here? It's just fist pump it. Let's go again. That was good. It was better than the last time. Let's play about with it again. Can we do it more? Absolutely. And you're looking to get them to such a point that by the time you do get down to, you know, in this case, again, getting towards day four, I once again got to look at this and think this guy in his own way is starting to use his equipment. You know, he's starting to understand his equipment and not one second did I mention the word alpine basic position but I think as well as the long leg short leg isn't something new it's something that's been we've used for a long time but yeah. I think it's it's more for that level you know level three if you want to ISIA level you know you're going to your, for your full cert is how do I get my center of mass to move further inside the turn yeah, but in that works, time, people's it, it, inside legs blocking their ability to move any further to the inside. But we can see here it works at the lower level, yeah. which is Absolutely. something you might not play with with you know guys who've got the six to ten weeks on snow or fifteen weeks or never you know had a ski lesson before in their life. It's, but it does work, and it, it creates work. a much more natural. But just because it works, should I now um, b begin like a, a religious sect? and tell everybody you I'm now going to do this forever? No. I would say yes. This, <laughs> no. Oh, okay. no. This, this would be, you know, this is one way of, of dealing and, and looking at it and thinking, okay, did it work with everybody, for example, is important. So here you see somebody who's over two meters five, very light, you know, a very light young lad. Um, but you're saying does it work for everybody? But the, this, this is the third ski I was seeing, and it's also again the word that we've, we've came up with every ski is young lad. Yeah, All of them are athletic to a degree. Um, so for me, I'd be interested to see does it work when we're seeing all the skier as well? Yeah, so okay, well, that is what the question would be next is does it work with somebody? Older? And that's where we're going to go with our next video, really, is how do we tackle then, let's say, the client who, you know, has been sitting behind a computer for 25, 30 years, doesn't get the opportunity because of his lifestyle to be as active, etc. doesn't have youth on his side and how does that affect him? So I don't know, whatever you, you know, want to make comment about what we have done today. Um, we may not be, because we're very, very busy um, planning our courses all the time, we may not be able to answer everybody's comments, but... Um, it will be interesting to know what your opinion is and we will do another one in the near future or what? Yeah, don't just take the piss out of the neck brace guys, yeah? A little bit of sympathy <laughs> please, but uh, yeah, we'll be yeah. doing a few more in the future and like I say, it's just, it's going through what we do as coaches, not saying it's the right way or it's the wrong way, it's just, we go out there, yeah, I'm not going to say play with my clients because that sounds weird, but we'll go out there and we, you know, we'll have fun on the hill and we're, we're trying constantly just try different things and see what works and what doesn't and um, I think that's what you should be doing in the sport is just don't lose the playfulness of it. Bye for now. Thanks from Ski Instructor Academy. See you next time.